You are now entering the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends. Coming to you from the Bob Studios, it's the History of Bad Ideas Podcast with your host, Jason Brigger and Jeff Now. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 42. I am Jason. I am Jeff. And episode 42 is going to be good because it's an even, good, symmetrical number, and I am Blake. Okay. Number 42, Jackie Robinson. 42. Woo. Woo. That's right. And we don't have a guest in the studio. It's just us three. All right. Woo! Let, let it flow. Let it all hang out. Let it go. We can be our own guests. Yes, that's right. So, Jason, how do you feel about that? I feel like shit. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, Jay. Tell us about your. Tell us about how you shit. feel like. I feel like excrement. I, got, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like I got leprosy. Uh, for those. Here, let me move. Hold on a second. Let me move my glass away from you. Yes. <laughs> I don't want you breathing on my glass. Uh, for the last three weeks, I've been having mono, uh, with a hernia. <laughs> Mono case. It's not. They're not related. Uh, so yeah, it's. Been, I beg uh, to differ. <laughs> so I got a small hernia, and I've had mono for three weeks. Uh, the doctor said I'll be better in a month, so that's good. Uh, I'm <laughs> so not. Got that going. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, it's actually pretty much out of my system. But they said uh, that I'm not going to feel like myself for at least a month, uh, which is always great. Um, so with two kids at home, it's so been you're great. Tired and lethargic, so you feel like me. Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> so when we celebrate the top five, we're not French kissing tonight? No, no, no. Okay, I got it checking. from you. I got it from watching you. <laughs> got it from you. So if I fall asleep or I seem lethargic, that is the reason. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> As opposed to what? Well, I'm usually hyper <laughs> and my voice crackles like Peter Brady, so. He's going to make us pick up his slack. Yes, yes. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and in the meantime, we do have some orange cello. Yeah, Ari- Chara. There we go. Orange cello. From Blake's home brewery. Yeah. All right, well, let's not clank glasses over here. Hey, just Yay. in case. Yay. I, okay, swear, I swear to goodness that uh, pure green alcohol is going to kill whatever uh, mono is in your system. I'm going to sip it. I'm not supposed to have alcohol. It's bad for the liver, which is what mono attacks, but Ooh. we can make an exception tonight. Uh. Especially something that's. Yeah, Annalise oh, and man, Neil good. from Dirty uh, Dirty Angels. Dirty Apes and Freaky Feet. <laughs> yes, <and> Dirty Apes. <laughs> if you guys will get on it and start making yourself some, just say. Okay, so uh, we are on the Musings of a Geek Network. Yay! Yay! And they just added a new show. They have a couple new shows. Yes, uh, Geek Ire. Uh, what is it, an Ireland-based uh, yes. show, so everyone go there. Yay! Go to Ireland? Ireland Geek? Well, I Ireland... just go to the thing and listen to their show, but if you want to go to Ireland, that's fine, too. Okay. So it's Geek Ireland, not as in Geek Ire, as in Ire, as in the no, other No, it's actually word. called Geek Ire. I-E. Uh, E-I-R-E. There you go. I, I not, Geek not Ireland. Ire as in, like, I'm angry. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Geek Ireland. Some people just happy... want to watch the world burn. Uh, do they yeah, eat? <laughs> do they drink a lot of Guinness there? And eat a lot of shepherd's pie. Speaking of Guinness, did, did you see they just came out with a lighter, uh, lighter version? Like, not a dark one. It's a light beer. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I I like a, yeah, it just like came a, out. I just saw an ad for it. Like I was a like, pale well, Guinness or something? Yeah. Uh, like an American... Pe- uh, yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, that looks really good if I could drink. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking mono. Um, I should have been looking for that. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, we're on Geek Life Radio, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Central on Fridays. What five... about in Timbuktu? Because I know we have a listener in Timbuktu. We do. Uh, that would be 5 a.m., just like Hawaii time. Man, you are on it. I am on it. Give me about 10 minutes. I'll be asleep. Oh, uh, here it is. Guinness Blonde, a U.S. That's lager. what it's called. Yes. Oh, an American lager. So yeah. it's shite. It still could be good. I'm intrigued by it because I'm not a big Guinness dark beer fan or it's piss water it's piss i'm not a big dark beer fan so oh, i'll take the blunt piss water compared to yeah whoa, whoa, whoa. it's not miller light okay just no, calm no, down I'm calm sure down oh, okay. unless miller light wants to sponsor us then i love miller light <laughs> i love it uh, so i'm being sponsored by how do you pronounce that blake by him stefaner yes that's what i'm being sponsored by. okay Stefan. yes if you, uh, we're all a little giddy here because we haven't seen each other in about two. Oh, we've seen each other, but we haven't been podcasting in two weeks because of the Paranormal Festival. We did two episodes, 
So, so we hope you listen to them. If you haven't, go back and listen. They're yes. good. They're fun. Jody E. Cook is on there. Yeah. And Paravisions. So we have a ghost hunter and a Bigfoot hunter. Uh, and I... Oh, and one other thing uh, before we get to listener feedback, I would like to uh, thank... Um, just and Andrew from Best of the Worst Movies. Oh, yes. Uh, Best of the Worst Movie Podcast. They just did their final episode. They're coming back uh, in January yay. with with a new show. What's the new show going to be called? Uh, I don't know, but they haven't announced it yet, but it's going to be about all movies. The Worst of the Best? Maybe. It's going to be movies that they actually want to watch. Yes. Not movies that yeah, exactly. So it'd be Worst of the Best, <laughs> right? Because they like those movies. They're just trying to figure out which was worst of all the great stuff that they liked. So I will say I uh, want to say thank you to those guys because they gave us a big old shout out on their last episode. Yes, they did. Awesome. Um, they thanked us for you know it, it is kind of funny like they are the first podcast that we became friends with, um, and all it took was me going onto a chat room and or like a geeky chat room and, and showing I, naked pictures of yourself. Don't ask. <laughs> We won't tell. <laughs> um, but no, they wrote something that, hey, this is our new podcast. Take a listen. And I wrote on there. I said, hey, we're starting. A, we got a podcast, too. I'm not sure how this works, but do you want to help each other and cross promote each other? And then we became friends. Yes. <laughs> so, and that was before he told him he was masquerading as a 14-year-old girl on the Internet. Don't worry. Uh, hi, I'm Chris Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so no, I do want to say thank you to Justin and Andrew. Um, so we're going to miss, uh, best of the worst cause I love that show. Um, but they're coming back, but I wanted to say thank you uh, guys for doing that. So yeah, Appreciate definitely. It. When they come back on, let us know what the new title is and we want to know what it is. And the last, uh, best of the worst was their award show. Yes. We yes. got to do a clip for them. With, yes, we uh, did. We were special guests. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, some of the other, uh, uh, shows on the uh, Musings Network did the same. So. so it was fun. It was fun listening to everyone else's little clips too, and and we did the best award of them all. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. So honored, at, you know. It's so honored. Um. Okay. So we got listener feedback. Blake, take listener it away. Feedback. You're going to do this from that one guy, number, number one, one fan, Doug. Doug. Give yourself a nickname. What's he have to say, Blake? Doug says, let's say it's your anniversary. What is the geekiest present you have gotten your wife? Huh. I, I was going to say mop and bucket. Aww. Oh, wait a minute. That's not geeky. That's just asshole. <laughs> Sometimes you That's right. Different. I really got her an insincorator. An insync? Raider. What the hell is that? A food disposal in your sink. Oh, oh I got it. To do with the band in bye bye bye. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm kidding. I actually got one at the time of my anniversary, and I told my wife that was her gift. Let's just say that did not go over well. <laughs> you know what? I cannot wait till your wife comes into the studio. Uh, Hobie fans, Blake's wife will be in the studio hopefully by the end of the year. Mm. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you have any questions. Oh, yeah, you're going to be tweeting us those <laughs> questions. Wait, we'll, we'll tell you exactly when. It'll be fun. Does Blake have a top five list of people <laughs> of women? <Yeah. laughs> Wait a minute, I'm not alone. Why can't he have a top yeah, five yeah, list? Yeah, yeah, ask questions like that. <laughs> I don't know, she picked George Clooney, I picked the babysitter. There, there you go, it was fine. I don't think I've ever got my wife a... Uh, uh, geeky got her a presents geeky for present? not yeah. for not for anniversary. Uh, she usually likes diamonds and rings, and I'm a nice yeah. guy, so I do that. Um, <laughs> she's just got so many diamond rings. She's got four. Wow, that's way too many. <laughs> One is too many in my opinion. Tell me about it. <laughs> she's like, oh, I need another band because uh, she has a wedding ring band, then the engagement ring, and she's like, well, I would like another band on the other side. And then I did Jeff's quote. I, it's good to want things. Uh, <laughs> it's my soulless. This is my soulless band. <laughs> and so uh, she hit me. And then. <laughs> and after you regained conscious. Yeah, she hit me in an elevator. Uh, <laughs> I was banned. Uh, or she was banned for life. Uh, but anyways, so it's I said, like okay. the anti Ray Rice. Yes. <laughs> uh, but no, so. She deserved it, so uh, I did get her. Uh, we went in to look for Wait a band. Minute. She deserved, she deserved the what? Ring. No, she <laughs> deserved a diamond not ring, not not a not, not punch in the elevator like Ray Rice. She's the one hitting yeah, me. Let's clarify this for our <laughs> listeners, please. I don't want them thinking the wrong thing about no. us. I mean, I get in sinkerators for your wife. You know, come on. I'm talking. She knocked the, me the fuck out. No, uh, 
<laughs> but no, uh, so she deserves it. And so we went in, deserves rings. Uh, so we went into the jewelry store and she's like, oh. And then the fucking saleswoman goes, well, you know what? A lot of people are doing her. It's getting one band in the front and in the back because it evens it out. Really? Really? Yeah, it's called <laughs> fucking you in the front and yes. fucking you in the back. <laughs> I don't know. Can you make it out of this pop tail? Yeah. <laughs> so she eventually did get one. Uh, that was a couple years ago. So, but anyways, so I've never gotten her geeky presents for anniversary. For a birthday, I've bought her uh, 3DS, Nintendo 3DS before. Ah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. um, I bought her some video games before. Um, so, well, no, there you go. What well, geeky yeah. things has she gotten you? That's the yeah. Oh, what about God. you? Have you got any geeky stuff from her? <laughs> <laughs> So, not to go too into specifics, but I got her a really thoughtful gift that she's been wanting for a while, uh, for her for her anniversary this year, which was a couple days ago, which was brought, the reason for the question. And then uh, she's like, well, you know, before all this, she goes, well, what do you want for your birthday, for your anniversary? I was like, uh, there's a wrestling game coming out for the PlayStation 4 November 18th. I just want that. <laughs> so, I get, <laughs> so I get her this, this present this week, and she's like, but all I got was a game for you. I was like, that's fine. I'm yeah. fine with that. <laughs> I give you a ring, you give me a wrestling ring. Yes, I'm fine now. with that. Hey. So she's got me a Nintendo Wii before for her birthday. Um, she's got me, t- that's all she buys me is geek gifts. I'm a pretty easy person to buy for. So. As long as she doesn't have a problem with you playing with your geek toys. That's she doesn't. right. She doesn't. There you go. So <laughs> It's actually to keep you busy while she can do what she wants. And also, uh, actually, well, the last three weeks I have not played PlayStation because of fucking mono. So. Mono prevents you from playing PlayStation? Dude, I don't think that'd be the prime time to play you know, PlayStation Play- because I am you can't s- go to work. What else are you doing no, all day? No, I am going to work. Well, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to work every day. I'm, in be- I'm sleeping by 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Oh, sorry. I can't come to work. I got mono. All right, see you later. And you, like, unpause your game. And you play for eight hours and you go to sleep. Uh, what's what's next? wrong with you? You should call me before you do this stuff, Jason. Before you get mono, I can I, plan exactly ahead. plan ahead. You know, Jeff and I can actually help you get through this mono period, and it ain't through going to work. Read the next question. All right, but anyways, more from number one fan Doug. You want to know about the Edmonton Oilers getting their first win this past Monday? Is this the start of a great season? And before you start that, I want to ask. What the hell other sports seasons are going on? Isn't the NFL the only sport that counts? No. Nothing starts until after the Super Bowl. NHL. NHL. What? I rather... When? Now. It starts Is there the- ice on the ground? Is there snow on the In North grass? Dakota. No. North then, Dakota. There, there, there's ice in the arenas, though. See, you can do that all That's artificial. Around. It's fake. It's let me let ice. you know. It's fake. It's real ice. No, it's fake ice. How is it fake ice? It's frozen water. Because it's inside. It's artificially. It's man-made. It doesn't count. So why is the NHL starting at the end of summer? It should be starting in December or January. It started in October. That's yeah. too early. <laughs> That's not the summer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just know there's NHL in Florida, for Christ's sake, and that's just wrong. Well, I agree with you on that. I agree with you. I will say I think my fancy uh, Musings fancy football team named the uh, Edmonton Oilers, I think they may have more wins this year than Edmonton Oilers hockey team will all year. Wow. Yeah, I'm about to say we're, we're already two weeks into the season before Edmonton got their first win. Yeah, they're 1-4-1. One, and one. So, I think 1-4-1, one, and one, I think is what it is. Excellent. So. Uh, well, with the start of the NHL, we'll have to go back to our Canadian correspondent and get some updates as we go throughout Nick the will, uh, Nick will give NHL us some uh, Edmonton Oilers update here. I yeah. still stuck in Moose Jaw or something. We haven't yes. heard anything since, since his last... Uh, we never got our third response from him. Jeez. Report. Well, you know how the they are up there you know they can't get the satellite working and they're on canadian time oh geez they that would wait four weeks more before we that's worse it. than island time <laughs> yeah exactly hey i'll tell you what in our next listener feedback i just want everybody to know we don't just go over your feedback we solve your problems as we well we do we solve your problems and nikki nz from pumazili that's pumazili at pumazili that's twitter that's twitter <laughs> She said, how do I beat the samurai on Tomb Raider? They keep killing me. And guess what? We found the answer. We got it. That's right. We got it from TombRaiderGirl.net. It's a website. By the way, uh, TombRaiderGirl.net, answer column people. Are you 
hot chicks running around in half tops and tight shorts? If so, send us your pictures to uh, Blake at Hobie. You know it's going to be <laughs> overweight men in the basement. <laughs> Pretending to be 14-year-old yes. girls on the internet. I'm Chris Hansen. There you go. <laughs> no, but seriously, Nikki from New Zealand at Pumazili. We have your answer, and we got it from TombRaiderGirl.net that says, I shoot them in the back, get the Y shield. That means hit the Y button. button. Now, that sounds like you do not get the timing right, but it, if you're getting a crossed red circle, that's definitely the case. That's You're not getting the timing right if you're getting that crossed red circle. You have to wait for the symbol to appear, and do not hit it too early. Don't get that itchy trigger thumb. Ah! Harder than one might think if you know what's coming, but also don't be late. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. We that, 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 was like, Nikki. that was like poetry. That's nope. actually a real answer, too, from online. We did look it up. I was trying to help you there. So if you got any video game questions, let me know. I can look at the internet for you. Yeah, <laughs> video game questions, real life questions. We might not have the right answer. But we'll have an answer. That's right. I'm hoping for Nikki's sake she figures it out before she actually <laughs> She sent it off. yesterday, so I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, this will go up probably, what, Thursday, Wednesday night? Wednesday Thursday night, Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Hopefully, right. for her sake, she's not still trying to kill these uh, samurai for the next three, four days That's with right. no luck. Beat that samurai on Tomb Raider. All right, our next uh, listener feedback is from Neil at DAPF Pod. Neil C. From? Dark Angels, Pretty Freaks. There you go. He does. What would your superhero outfit look like and sidekick? I'll tell you what my superhero outfit is going to have to look like. First of all, it's going to have to be all black. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wear a beret. Why? Because berets are fucking awesome. It'll be a raspberry beret? No, it's going to be a black beret. No, it's not like a prince (laughs) beret. It's going to have to be a black beret, cloak, cape, maybe a duster. <laughs> you know, black gloves, of course. And then maybe some uh, Matrix shades. And then uh, my sidekick would be some uh, nerdy kid that's like a super computer tech wizard. Okay. All right. That's what I would have. Um, I would have to go with probably, like I said, the, the big long duster. Go for a brown coat, you know. Go, go for... Uh, a, uh, firefly like firefly look okay um, my sidekick would be the hottest chick available okay okay that's, that's brigitte nielsen if she's the hottest one available yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh i would be um i would be kind of like uh the i'm always into the ice superhero power i really love the ice so i would be like samuel jackson from uh the incredibles frozen yeah i like his outfit <laughs> um not spandex though that would be the issue yeah. um but ca- you'd have to have a wallet that says bmf on it bad motherfucker bad motherfucker <laughs> be my friend yes <laughs> yes exactly jeff had a lonely childhood <laughs> uh my sidekick uh i would be like i would have pyro so from x-men so uh, fire and ice Oh, wow. You got that. Ooh. Or would you be his sidekick? I don't care. Okay. Really? I'm a kind of strong personality. And, well, didn't we get a uh, question on the Twitters? I don't see on our lineup here, but I thought uh, uh, Musings Pod sent a question about uh, something about, you know, what sidekick. Would oh, that. Be? Sorry. I forgot to add that one uh, to everyone else's outline. <laughs> oh, uh, it was on your outline? Oh. Yes. Oh. This is the only thing changed. Uh, from Jillian at one Jillian. If also, if you had to be Jillian said it. Yes, okay. if you had to ha- be a sidekick, who would you be? Hashtag Hobie. If I had to be a sidekick, see, I was ready for this one. I'm, so- I'm sorry, Jillian. I thought it was Dan that sent it. Jillian sent it. Dan sent us know. one another question. That's on next week's episode. We'll, okay. we'll wait for that. Um, if I had to be a sidekick, uh, I'll go to the part where the time when I was a sidekick. <laughs> One Halloween, I dressed oh. up as Arthur from The Tick when my buddy Mike dressed up <laughs> as The Tick. Uh, Is that Mike uh, from Columbus or Cleveland? Yeah, Mike from up in the Cleveland That area. I met? Yeah, you met Oh, that, 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 shout that. out to you, Mike. Yeah, Mike, even though you don't listen. That's okay. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> but yeah, he went as The Tick and I went as Arthur. Okay. The accountant? The accountant. Arthur the accountant? dressed as a moth. Yes, yes. the moth. <laughs> I would be, uh, come on. Everybody knows who I would be, Robin. Well, yeah. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I would be Nightwing. 
Oh no, he's his own person, isn't Same he? Same thing. No, yeah, that one's not a side. No, pick. you know what? That's a tough call. You know what? I may switch it up. I don't think I would be Robin because I th- feel Batman's too uh, moody. You would have to be Robin because no, it's your name. No, well, it is almost the second Robin. Yes. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go uh, either Robin or Arsenal, Green Arrow sidekick, Roy Harper, from the comic books, because I like the bow and arrow. I'll always like the archers. You can go for that, but I'm still saying you gotta be Robin. I'll be Robin. You gotta be the second Robin. You yeah. gotta be Jason Todd. That's yes. Jason's middle name, Todd. Yep. And he really is Robin. Yep. <laughs> they I, named it after me. I was wondering why you like those tight green shorts all the time. <laughs> I'm Chris Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you be, Blake? I don't know. I'd have a hard time being somebody's sidekick. <laughs> If I was somebody's sidekick and I wasn't the numero uno guy, I'd be like the guy on the uh, couch drinking a beer going, yep, whatever, go ahead and get them. <laughs> I'll monitor your uh, position on the internet here on Google Maps. Could right. you be a teacher at the X-Men Academy? Why don't you do that? Sounds like you'd be more like an Al Bundy. Yep, <laughs> whatever, no man. Yep. Does that mean big... uh, you know I could do the teacher thing at the academy? I, mean, I could yeah, see that. I could do that. Yeah, I could see yeah. that. I could see you being the guy, like as you said, the guy back home coordinating things on the computer. Oh wait, you have to learn the computer. Uh, yeah. That. Let me tell you what to do. <laughs> He's the guy that's always telling us what to do. That bastard. I hate him. But anyways, well, we got some more listener feedback, and this one is from Kiki E. At Ms. Radness. Ms. Radness. Ms. I like that. Radness. I did too. E. She said, also, I took my time to make an informed opinion, but now I'm certain at Bad Ideas Podcast is so good. That's actually a real tweet we got from Ms. Radness, and we do appreciate it. That is awesome. Love that, Kiki. And I love the fact that you took your time to make an informed opinion. Yes. Informed opinion. That's Be- educated. Better than most Markins that can make an opinion out without knowing a thing. So Yes, th- thank you, Kiki. That actually did make my day. So. Yes, thank you, Kiki. I would like to know what drugs are you on <laughs> and uh, what mental hospital ward should we send the flowers to? <laughs> to think that we're that good. <laughs> <laughs> That is a very nice thing, though. Thank you. Yay, Kiki. So, you get our shout-out of the week. Woo! So. Oh, dude, that was in stereo. <laughs> and it wasn't planned. <laughs> and that was improvisation. <laughs> you know what? That's kind of like, uh... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, I meant to have that queued up on the computer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we'd probably we have to play... Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, have, we'd probably have to pay royalty fees every time yeah. we play. I don't know. It's just a yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're on uh, two notes before you get yes. royalties. That's just yeah. one long note. <laughs> so if you go back a couple episodes, we were doing our own yes, but I went and I found on YouTube <laughs> the yes. So that we could do that on your own. From CSI Miami. From CSI Miami, yes. Okay, finally, what do we got, Blake? We got Dr. Number One and Dr. Number One, which I still say is a smart, secret-coded James Bond Dr. No reference. You can ask him. He's right outside our window. Hello! Yeah, he's the one flashing us. Yeah, he's scary. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he's Ooh. scary. Maybe I won't ask him. But anyways. Although he's not packing much, is he? <laughs> 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 Where's Nick? Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Doctor Number One says, "Who would you like to see as Doctor Strange? Joaquin Phoenix or Ewan McGregor?" Hashtag No Stranger Doctor Than Me. <laughs> so the well, Doctor Number yes, One. Yes, that's pretty true. Uh, so Jeff. if it wasn't Doctor Number One, who would it be? <laughs> Phoenix or McGregor? Between those two, I would go with Joaquin Phoenix. I, I think agree. he can pull off. I agree. Doctor Strange more. You, I don't know if it's just because I know too much of other stuff Ewan McGregor has, and I just can't see Doctor Strange in that. Doctor Strange and Obi-Wan Kenobi, not the same person. However, Doctor Strange and Johnny Cash, yeah, they could be the same person. I walked the line. Wow, that wasn't That's bad. Right. Thank you. That was Thank the you. best singing I've ever heard you do. <laughs> it's my impressive. life. Oh, and there it goes. Yeah, and now we're done. I walked the line. <laughs> Uh, no, I agree. I think Walking Phoenix is strange enough that he could pull it off. So. <laughs> strange. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Come on, Nick, wake up. Okay, so we do have a new game here. We're not playing any plot lines this week. We got a new game. We got a challenge for you listeners. Yes. 
It's a new game, and it's courtesy of Nerd of Mouth. It's a yes. podcast that I listen to. We'll give credit where credit's due. Yes, they came up with it. Uh, and so we do not steal on this podcast. We give credit. We're not like some podcasts. We give credit to it if we find out something. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Anyway, say no more, money more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, 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 you're getting a little too close. Sorry, sorry, to, sorry. Uh, sorry. Know, what I mean? know what I mean? Hey, sorry. Hey, 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 nerd of mouth. Nerd so, of mouth. Hey, hey, know what I mean? Nerd of mouth did this a couple episodes ago. They pick a really bad film, and it's got to be a mo- major motion picture. So you can't do, like, Blood Diner or Leprechaun 17 back in the hood. Or something yeah. that will be on uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Mm, or correct. anything in our plot lines for the correct. most part. <laughs> Basically, you take a bad film, and we have to all have seen it, and we have to find one good thing about one true good thing, not sarcastic. So yeah. let me give you an example. Batman and Robin. Jeff, you have to find one good thing, because it's a universally yeah. awful film. Yes, everyone agrees it is an awful film with not much to... Uh, to look forward to when is you watch that the that. Batman that had nipples on and Mr. His Freeze? Chest? Yes, yeah, Mr. Freeze and that's and, 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 and an awful version of Bane. Mm-hmm. Um, and Nerd of Mouth did a really good job. They did like a fast, like a speed round. They did like ten films in one episode. Oh, really? So I do appreciate Damn. the Nerd of Mouth. Great, great, ep- uh, great podcast. So, anyways, go ahead, Batman and uh, Robin. Batman and Robin. I'm going to put this out there, and I know, I know, I've heard people complain about it. Talking about how, oh my god, George Clooney ruined Batman, blah, blah, blah. And I always say, George Clooney was the only good thing about the movie. George Clooney's portrayal of Bruce Wayne and Batman was uh, probably the only one of, if not the only good thing about it. He didn't kill Batman, everything else associated with it killed Batman. Mm -hmm. And I do like to say, I had heard where George Clooney made the comment uh, when he was portraying Batman... Uh, or Bruce Wayne, I should say. He was playing Bruce Wayne as if Bruce Wayne was a gay man. Okay. Okay. And that's how he perf- uh, did the, uh, uh, got his, oh, I don't know, his motivation or whatever behind the character. Okay. But I thought his character was the best. I mean, Alicia Silverstone, crap, Chris O'Donnell, why? Was I- that, was he inspired by the nipples on the front of his costume? He might have been. Oh, Joel nipples. Did it. But there's no nipples on the Batgirl outfit. Yeah, what's up with that? That's so, discrimination. It is. Blake, what do you think? Any good part of Batman Robin? No. Okay. Uh, you're oh, supposed you to find, find one. You gotta find one. I mean, even if it's like, I like the opening title sequence. Uh, Although that was bad. Enough. That was okay. bad, too. Wait a minute. And it had Silverstone. Okay? Okay. There okay. you go. Kind of weak, but we'll let you go. It's the first week for oh, it. Oh, it had that Seal song. I did like that, too. Oh, <laughs> like a kiss from a rose. <laughs> I walk the line. Uh, uh, man, that was no Susie Sue and the Banshees. Uh, <laughs> Jay, did you have a... Uh, I was going to say the Batman credit card. No. Anyway. Oh, I was about to reach across the table and slap you. Uh, I agree. I actually think George Clooney is uh, the only good show, part of that. Now, he's not as dark Bruce Wayne as most of them are portrayed, but that's okay. I, I like the different take on him. Um the only other thing is that El McPherson was not horrible as his girlfriend. His beard? Yeah. Because he was portraying him If he was gay, gay yes. <laughs> uh, but everything else was bad, so. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I agree with you that. Here's a little interesting thing I found on Cracked.com that one of these fan theories that uh, the first two Batman movies by Tim Burton were... In theory, real Batman movies. Oh, real Batman. It took place yeah. in real life. It know, took this, place in the real world. According to Tim Burton. Okay? Oh, okay. So it was, you know, you're supposed to watch them and think, okay, this is a real world thing. Batman's out there. The Joel Schumacher ones are films based on the uh, based in those worlds. Oh, uh, so it's like, oh, this stuff is happening in Gotham. We'll make a movie based after, on the stuff. After that- Batman is retired and yeah. that, and they come by and make these films, which kind of makes sense. It's a different co- Gotham. It looks different. It's more cartoony. It's kids like, and it's like that's actually a clever idea. So, so it's kind of like in our world, World War II really happened. Then Quentin Tarantino came along and made Inglorious Bastards. Correct, correct. So Batman happened, yeah. and and got, Tim Burton's Batman's happened, and then Joel Schumacher made a film about them in that world. I think that's a lot of energy and effort <laughs> yes. made, poured into that just to make sure that those really didn't suck as bad as they yes. did. <laughs> and we made these really sucky movies. Let's try and spin this. What kind of spin doctor came up with that shit? <laughs> Some guy was very, very bored one night. Some guy smoking too much weed. Must have been from Denver, Colorado. 
Kevin Smith. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so your fans, send us a bad movie, a major motion picture, a very, very bad movie, and we have to find one good thing about it. Yes. One good thing. So. It's time for another installment of the News of the Geek. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so variety. Variety. Wait, wait, wait. Variety. Variety. <laughs> Jason's Mon- meds are kicking in. Right. Mon- That's the problem. There's no meds for Mono, so I think he's just giving me a stroke right now. <laughs> right. Um, and we did get some tweets about me shaking up a baby and letting it go last week, so I do appreciate that. Oh, you did? <laughs> yes. I yes. Miss those the people laughed and they said, I don't know if I should feel guilty about laughing. We got two <laughs> tweets on it. <laughs> I have to go back through your tweet log yeah. to find those. Uh, <laughs> Variety is reporting that Robert Downey Jr. is about to sign a deal which will bring Civil War, or at least the start of it, from the comic books to the big screen in Captain America 3. Uh, actually, he is he already signed a deal. He just uh, confirmed it. He will be in uh, Captain America 3, and it basically kicks off a new phase in Marvel Studios. Mm. All right. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with Civil War, Jeff, give us some background. Uh, Civil War, uh, the government uh, puts tries to pass a law where all super-powered beings must register and then you know, register to the government. Demasked. And then unmask. be yeah unmask them, be registered, and then also give their services to the government. If they're super powered, they can go help them fight crime or fight wars or whatnot. Yeah, and there was a big split amongst the entire superhero universe in Marvel, where Captain America was like, "That's completely shitting on people's civil civil liberties," because he's Captain America, and Iron Man. America. Iron Man was like, well, no, we have to do our civil civic duty to because you know, he's corporate perfect. America. And although oh. although the biggest problem I had with that was they kind of negated that when they did uh, X Men. No, not X Men. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, X Men reboot. Secret what Wars, was uh, Secret Invasion. Uh, Secret Invasion, yeah. where it turned out Iron Man was a scrawl the whole time. Was he a scrawl the whole yeah. time? Yeah, I well, didn't he know. was a, he was a scrawl during Civil Wars. Tony Stark was? Yeah. I did not get that. I did not realize that. I uh, got a secret invasion. I never realized that. I'm almost positive that's what it was. If I'm Graphic wrong, novice, let me help know. us out here. Yeah, if I'm wrong, let me know. Nicole, uh, seriously, let us know. Send, hey, send, send me an evil mad tweet, because I, I thought Tony Stark was a scrawl during uh, Civil War. I have a question. What the fuck is a scrawl? It's an alien, uh, shape-changing alien. It can change into anybody. So basically, it's like a doppelganger. Yeah. Now, I doubt so, they're going... So Stark is a doppelganger. In the comic book, he was. Yeah. The entire time. Yeah. And during they kept... Civil War, not the entire time of the run of his book. Just during just the Civil during, War. Just, just when he was Civil being War. a bad guy. But he was a normal guy before that. Which really yeah. sucks because in a, in a they take his body. Outfit. They take the aliens take his body away and then they replace him with an alien that looks like him. So who's dropping acid when they came up with this shit? <laughs> well my question Stanley. is Stanley. <laughs> so if he was an alien during this, Stanley, what about? He was definitely doing some angel dust. <laughs> <laughs> he's old enough. He comes from that generation where he's doing PCP, right? Yeah, PCP. <laughs> After Captain America died, Tony Stark did the issue, the confession. But I bet you that's after he came back. Then maybe I can't remember. I don't know did if he, he came did, did he die after Civil War. He died after yeah. after Civil War. Yes, yeah, you mean Secret Invasion? Oh, Secret Invasion. I don't yeah. know. I, I think he did. So, but anyway, so they said the one reason Robert Downey Jr. is so excited about it is because he wanted to play kind of a villain in it. Yeah, although so, I think it would be great. I, I I would love to see him see it where they don't cop out by saying, "Oh, he was." I, I want to see you know somebody who seriously believes that what he's doing is right for certain reasons. Mm-hmm. And and I mean, there's no he's not really a villain because he agrees with. He does know, agree with what the government said. Yeah, he is getting paid forty million dollars wow. plus a back end deal 40 plus a back end? yes but it will wow. include a another i think it uh let's see here yeah i think it's 40 million for his role here plus a back end so that's just for captain america 3 now i have Ooh. heard that that was including avengers 3 but it doesn't matter even if included yeah. avengers 3 is 20 million yeah. a show film 20, yeah plus a back end which is going to be what 80 million <laughs> uh i'll watch the movie probably not 80 million times but i'll watch the movie um Basically, uh, he said he uh, he may even be in a fourth Avengers film too, Downey. Why not? Downey. It's pain. Well, well yeah. yeah. Well, I know what he he wants to step away from doing all the the action stuff and being the Iron Man, but he seems to be more than willing to be Tony Stark. 
I think so. As I think as he replaces Samuel L. Jackson as the figurehead. They could, because Sam's pretty much done now with yeah but i could see samuel L. jackson being in a offshoot he could be in secret avengers or new avengers and he could be like the underground one he could be in a film like that and not in charge of you know shield not that he is anyways but because coulson is right now but i'm just saying he could be i could see them doing okay we'll do two films with you you get your own group and then let tony Stark, robert downey jr take over as the role of that a fear he had i i see that happening um Let's see here. Uh, Basically, they added 30 to 40 more days of filming uh, to Avengers Age of Ultron because they have to now, um, what do you call it? They have to uh, add a little bit more about Civil War in it. (laughs) Like, plant the seeds. A month's worth of filming just to plant the seeds of what's going to come up to the next movie? Yeah. That's a lot of filming. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, At the end of Avengers Age of Ultron... Uh, let's see here. Spoilers, but this could change. Uh, Captain America is having a team of Falcon, War Machine, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Black Widow, and probably the Vision. I didn't Um, see that. Ah! (laughs) Nick! (laughs) Uh, and that will probably be the Avengers 3 team. So. I, I, yeah, until you, uh sent this out i didn't know uh, they were planning war machine being in there yeah i but, figure i guess he takes over for tony stark yeah did, did they uh sign uh, don Cheadle? yeah he's got a couple films i, I, think I he's, didn't know that i think he's six six films oh wow yeah okay. um because i like don Cheadle. So yeah I, I i really actually like that so i think it's great they're doing um they said they're doing civil war and Fallen Sun are being considered for the tit- subtitles. Now, which one is Fallen Sun? I think that's where he actually, Captain America dies. Dies, okay. That's what I thought. Um, so, my thought is, did they change everything? Because originally they were going to have Thanos, in theory, come down for Avengers 3. Yeah. Now are they saying, we'll push it back? Because they supposedly, he might get his own film with another set, with the other set of Avengers. And I have absolutely no problem still dropping Thanos hints, but push him off for uh, the future. And I, I mean, Thanos probably shouldn't be the big bad until you're looking at uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah. And, you know, or whenever Guardians and Avengers meet up is obviously when Thanos will probably be the bad guy. They also said the other rumor is that Downey, since he may have signed on for a fourth Avengers, that could be the one that they all join up after a Civil War fallout of the Avengers 3, Captain yeah. America, everything comes back together, and Thanos is the reason why... Civil War gets, you know, they decide to team up again because this big bad guy, what makes enemies help each other? A bigger enemy. That, that's it. So I like that idea. I like it. So it'd be interesting. So uh, Reed Richards and Spider-Man play such a huge role in Civil War, the comic book. What are they going to do now <laughs> in the movies? Oh, they, they'll just write him as somebody else. Instead of it being, you know, Reed Richards, they'll bring Doctor in, Strange. Uh, oh, Doctor Strange, I was going to say, uh, uh, what's it? Hank Pym. Oh, that's a good one. I mean, you know, the other big scientific mind, they just put Hank Pym doing whatever Reed Richards yeah. would have done. Um, I mean, Spider-Man, you can replace him with pretty much any other Avenger in there. Yeah. Uh, does he really play a big role other than the fact that... He unmasks. He unmasks, but that was, you know, huge for the comic books. It's going to mean nothing for the films, I think. Oh, but it, oh, it doesn't stick because of the devil and one more day. Fuck you, Marvel. Anyways. Yeah, what Jason said. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> Spider-Man ending. Oh, we don't know how to unma- put the mask back on. We shouldn't have fucking unmasked him, bitches. Well, you know what? <laughs> you know what I like about all of that? All yes. of what you just talked about came from Badass Digest. It did. <laughs> Badass, Badass Digest. Yeah. I still want a business card from Badass Digest. Actually, Jason, I want you to contact Badass okay. Digest. And I want you to... See if we can get an interview with the badass guy himself. We could try that. The we head of badass. Or would or, you rather get El Mayimbe from... Uh, or El Mayimbe. Yeah. <laughs> from Latino Review. From both. Latino Review. <laughs> Let's um, see if we can get both. The other thing for badass is they're saying uh, Joe and Anthony Russo, the directors of Captain America 2, are in talks to flesh out the Civil War storyline in Avengers 3 by taking over the directing duties. So they're going to be directing Avengers 3, huh? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also may be doing the fourth one, too. All right. Well, yeah, I can't blame them because, yeah, what they did in uh, uh, Cap 2 is pretty damn good. I can't 
fault them for wanting to bring them on. And I'm assuming uh, the, what's his name is leaving after Avengers two. Uh, uh, Whedon. Whedon. Yes. Yeah, Josh yes. Whedon. Uh, finally, uh, or another thing, uh, Warner Brothers released their slate of DC movies. And ca- hold on, people. Here we go. All right, this is a long list. Get ready. Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Wait, wait. Batman versus Superman, colon, colon Dawn, Dawn of, of Justice. Justice. Yeah, I got colon, it. that's right. Well, it versus or ass. V? Ver- oh, it is V. Sorry, it's Batman v. v Superman. Colon, In a court Dawn of law. Of yeah. <laughs> I think uh, go Batman, go Batman. I think Kevin Je- uh, Smith is saying B- Batman v Superman colon criminal intent. <laughs> <laughs> bah, bah. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> CSI. That's March twenty fifth, two thousand sixteen. Uh, August fifth, two thousand sixteen. Couple months later, the Suicide Squad. Suicide Woo! Squad. Uh, they're just dying to kill themselves yeah. for that one, aren't they? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Basically, a bunch of criminals get uh, hired by Amanda Waller, uh, who's in the DC Universe, and basically told, do these jobs that yeah. the good guys won't you, do you because do the they're black dangerous. black ops jobs for the government, and we won't put you to death. Yeah, we will expunge your record eventually. <laughs> so Will Smith is in talks for that. I'm serious. As uh, they don't Tiger? Know, they didn't say. Oh, okay. Uh, and also, Tom Hardy. I heard Tom Hardy was in talks yeah. with that. Yeah, uh, Captain Boomerang's one of the bad guys in it. That were one of the guys on the Suicide Squad. Is, is, has he been in the Suicide Squad? He's been in it. Oh, yeah. wow. It's yeah. been so many. They keep trying to yeah. kick him out, but he keeps coming back in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that was so bad. <laughs> you may not know the com- <laughs> You may not know the comic books, but you got your puns. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeff's almost dying over there. He's all red. <laughs> Um, can I finish? <laughs> uh, Wonder Woman comes out June 23rd, 2017, and it's supposed to be Thor-like. Uh, Justice League, November 23rd, 2017, part one, Justice League part one. Uh, the Flash is coming out in 2018, March 23rd, uh, starring Ezra Miller from I, Perks of Being a Wallflower, and we need to talk about Kevin. I do not no, know we Ezra need to Miller, talk about but... Kevin. Yeah. I heard bo- good things about both of those movies, and I still have yet to see either of them. But uh, I've heard good things, so that probably means good things for the Flash. Yes, uh, but it's not going to be connected to obviously the TV, the TV universe, show. which is fine. You think you think it'll be a different Flash? I think so. You think it'll be Wally West? I think it's going to be Wally West, Barry Allen, yeah, or Jay Garrick. Oh, I, I'm we're kidding. Old school. I don't there. think it is. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, it'll be quick. Bart Allen will be ah, Bart. Allen. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, good times. Man, Blake, you're oh, on tonight. Uh, our tech guy isn't, but we're on. <laughs> uh, Aquaman releases July 27th, 2018 with Jason Momoa. Yeah, hold on a second. Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Yes. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> That's it. Jason Momoa. I don't know. Jason Momoa. As Aquaman? Well, as Aquaman. He's from Game Are of Thrones. Are you going to put a blonde wig on him or something? No, he's got long hair. No. What? Well, they, they're um, not blonding his hair up. It's just going to be regular. No, no. Aquaman's got to be blonde. It's, from the pictures, it doesn't look like it. Really? Yeah. Because the reason he He's was... He's got a goatee and everything. Got the long beard. The and reason he's not like the bad guy in the movie? No. 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 The, the, no. Reason Jason, the reason Aquaman was like kicked out of Atlantis was because of his blonde hair. I mean, it made him an outcast. Warner Brothers doesn't really care about the script. Oh. <laughs> no, it's got to be... But... but I did see Jason Momoa used to be like a bleach blonde surfer dude before he was on Game of Thrones. Oh, interesting. Uh, he was like kind of a skinny beach blonde. Then he started like, you know, lifting and getting roids. Get, yeah, uh, roids. He started roids. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, supporting cast of Mara, Orm, Black Manta, and The Trench is all in there. The Trench is awesome. I don't know The Trench. It's, a, it's from the new 52 uh, Aquaman. That's why I don't and know. And it's it. like these evil little. Uh, fish creatures. He's like. making like hand gestures. Yeah. And I'm like, ah! It clears everything up for our, you know, <laughs> listening audience. Uh, okay, let's no. see. Shazam! Shazam! With Don Knotts. Uh, comes out April 5th, 2019. That's not Don Knotts, that's The Rock. Whatever. The rock. Shazam! Yeah. Oh, the Rock. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Justice League Part 2 comes out June 14th, 2019. And then you get to 2020, you get some interesting ones. Cyborg? 
April 3rd, 2020. I'm intrigued. I like Cyborg. Uh, and Green Lantern gets rebooted June 19th, 2020. <laughs> They're waiting a long time to reboot that, <laughs> to which aren't they? Dan Zisco at Musings did oh. ask, is that still too early <laughs> to reboot? <laughs> I'll reboot it as quick as possible so we get the bad taste out of our Ralph mouths. Ralph Garman from Hollywood Babylon thinks uh, the reason we're into 2020 is they're hoping that Ryan Reynolds is dead by then. <laughs> oh, come on. No, R- Ryan Reynolds. Now, granted, and I was discussing this at work uh, when this stuff came up. I was discussing with some people at work. I think uh, Ryan Reynolds was, I should have put on my uh, miscast top five that we did a couple weeks ago. <laughs> because as much as I like Ryan Reynolds, I mean, I've liked Ryan Reynolds all the way back to Two Guys, A Girl, on a Pizza Place. He was terribly cast as Hal Jordan. He was great as Wade Wilson in Deadpool. Yes. And I'm glad that they, you know, they're going to do that movie. And he is, is he signed on to do it? Or... Uh, for Deadpool? Yeah. Yes. And uh, it's going to be attached to the X-Men universe. It's all going to be connected. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm happy with that because they fucked up Deadpool at the end of Wolverine yeah. uh, Origins. I don't remember that show. Because X-Men, uh, what was that last one? Days of Future Past Days just Future wiped Past everything just wiped out. out. So it's okay. to see Days of Future Past. I'm going to get on uh, DirecTV. Or, uh, what do you call it? No, DV, uh, no. <laughs> Shut it! <laughs> you asked me what do you call it. 8-track. Yeah. No. <laughs> hey. I'm going to get it on demand. Oh, video cassette? <laughs> yes. Sometimes this week. Disc? Sometimes this week when I'm passed down on the couch. Betamax. Uh, and there's going to be Superman sequel and a Batman film somewhere along in there. To be determined. Uh, so there's your movies. Uh, we just got a tweet from Graf- Nickel at Graphic Novice. Uh, Tony Stark was not a scrawl during Civil War. Really? Yes. I'm going to have to. Wow. So there, there's your uh, fact of that. I was under the misimpression for like 10 years now. Yes, you are. Uh, let's see. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Has recruited... Uh, Adewale Akinuyu Agbaje. Mr. Echo. Echo. <laughs> Mr. Echo. Yeah, From Lost. Say, I can't pronounce his name. From Lost. He'll always be known as Mr. Echo to Mr. me. Mr. Echo. Uh, his role will be Malco, a character who doesn't even appear in the books. Doesn't even exist in the so damn So he's going to die in two episodes. Yeah. Well, the, the biggest problem with Adelwe, Akunye, Mr. Echo. Mr. Echo. Is he tends to want to leave television shows that he joins. He joins a TV show and then wants to leave before you know his character arc is over. It would be great if in Game of Thrones he enters riding a polar bear. That would be cool. Yes. But so, uh, <laughs> or a smoke monster, since that's what. No, that would him. just be tailing him. <laughs> smoke monster. There you go. But uh, he he tends not to want to stay onto a project too long anyway. So it's Game of Thrones is perfect for him because they can kill him off whenever he's ready to leave. That's right. And you only got ten episodes for a season. Yeah. Has the so season it's not like started? You gotta stick around. That won't start till like March. Oh, no, okay. it doesn't start until March. Well, that's but, the thing is they're, they're filming now, so I don't know if he's going to be on the newest season or if he's going to not join until the following season. Questions of the universe. I don't know. Questions <laughs> of the universe. But Dan, I, just go answer these. <laughs> but I, I'm really disappointed. Because Game of Thrones, the next book in George R. R. Martin's series, was supposed to be out by now. I'm a hobbit. Winds Winds of Winter was supposed to have been out by now, but according to him, uh, a little while ago, his publishers they all stopped putting out estimated release dates <laughs> because he's so horrible <laughs> on meeting them, you know, building everybody's expectations up. So, in uh, originally about a year or two ago, it was it was aimed for. October of 2014, the Winds of War is supposed to be done. But recently, you know, apparently, George R. R. Martin said, though, hey, you know, he's got two more books to go. And they're going to be probably about 1,500 pages each. That's it? Oh, so he's keeping them at two books. 1,500 pages each. Yeah, he's keeping them at two books. And originally said, well, maybe I'll have a third. Like, yeah, just yeah. keep introducing new characters and storylines. Is Jesus Christ in this book? Not because yet. That, that was all. about that time it'll be coming out. But, you know, so he said he's got about 400 words written. 400 words? <laughs> a couple months ago. Yeah, I got about 400 words into it. At 15, but at 1500 pages, he's got but 400 But wait a minute, words. he said, uh, he said, yeah, but only 200 are really done. Words. Yeah. 200 words. Yeah. And they're all... I, I can write 200 words accidentally. Yes. Well, that doesn't mean it's going to make sense. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, wait. Pages, I meant pages. Pages, okay. 200 pages. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little better. 
400 pages. He's only got 200 that really count because the other 200 are just, you know, unverified. The history of bad ideas, that was the worst typo ever the worst. It was just a word per page. Wow, <laughs> let me just say. Yeah! So the best part about this, his, his publisher says, you know, we're not going to give you an estimated release date anymore because he's horrible at meeting them. Yeah. But based upon his writing habits, the next book, Winds of Winter, which is a follow-up to The Dance of Dragons, probably wouldn't be due until about 2015-2017. Oh, <laughs> uh, But anyway, well, do you think uh, Mr. Echo's character, this Malco guy, you think he'll be completely new or just an amalgam of different characters? That's actually why he's writing the eighth book. Well, just because really, of this yeah, character. Exactly. Well, the, the, yeah, he starts his... His storyline starts in books, in the final book, so he's got to add three more. Yeah, yeah, he's actually a character that's in the book that hasn't been released exactly. yet. Exactly. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, he's probably one of those uh, conglomerate characters that the show uses. Yeah. But when he was confronted about uh, the show superseding and surpassing his novel series, he kind of blew it off as like, well, let's think of it as it, its own entity. And it exists on its own, and the books are going to exist on their own, and basically what it comes down to. So if you're a fan of the the TV series only, that's good. If you're a fan of the book series only, that's bad, I think, because you've got what could be in the books, but maybe he'll change it up. You never know. Or he'll stick with whatever's in the books, because he is a writer on that show still, doesn't? isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, 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 th- I, I think, think this first... season he's actually... Uh... Yeah, more, back of from it. Yeah. more of a yeah, consultant. Yeah, he's more of a consultant. Yeah, because he's trying to finish the wings of fucking winter. He's trying to write the books, yeah. He wrote 100 he pages. Yeah, he wrote 100 pages. <laughs> he wrote 12 pages. words. <laughs> Today. But, but what's interesting, if you go back, he released Game of Thrones in 1996. Then he came out with Clash of Kings in 1998. And then he came out with Storm of Swords in 2000. So he was like on a good good trend there. It's like every other year. And you're like, yeah, if you're a fan, you're like, you're digging it, you're digging it, you're digging it. And then all of a sudden... Feast for Crows comes out in 2005, five years later, and you you finally get that, and you're like, yay. When's the next book coming? Dance with Dragons came out. When's in. the next book coming? When's the next book coming? Fuck this series. I'm done. I'm moving on to, you know, Hunger Games or whatever. <laughs> it took six years for Dance with Dragons in 2011. All you right, know why? Because so- he got money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I already content. One of those. <laughs> And prostitutes. We can confirm that. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, another thing I heard uh, rumor about uh, uh, Game of Thrones was that they were talking about uh, the character of Jamie Lannister is going to be shooting scenes in Dorn this upcoming season. And that's completely wrong. And that is not at all with the book. He never no. set foot anywhere they near Dorne. They sent another white cloak to Dorne. Yeah, so I was just curious as... To how that'll go. I, I don't and, well, this is where they're splitting because obviously, obviously, some of the storylines they're at where he's at in the books, and some of them they're not even caught up yet. That yeah. makes me so furious. I know. Well, I mean, the same thing happens on your uh, zombie show, uh, Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Oh, I've given up on trying to figure out where they're going with that one. Yeah, because because <laughs> like characters that are dead that are alive in the book versus the TV show. First or, episodes of the season have been great. Yeah, they've been awesome. Walking Dead. Yeah. I've heard that, but I'm still about six seasons behind. That's okay. So I'm like, I'm breaking about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ruin any spoilers for me. <laughs> talk about it yet. Damn it. <laughs> okay, so that's News of the Geek. You got anything else, Blake, real quick? No. Okay. Well, they're okay. Oh, I just want to talk about True Detective casting. Go ahead. Have you got something real quick? Well, True Detective Cats. They, well, everybody knew Colin Farrell was in. Yes. But then they announced his, uh, the second big name they got on it. It's going to be Vince Vaughn. Ooh. Exactly. But in my point, exactly. So Kevin Vince, James if, in it, if, too? If, no. <laughs> if Vince Vaughn is playing Vince Vaughn, I'm probably not going to like it. But if Vince Vaughn actually takes this on as a serious, serious role... And like a lot of actor comedians like to try and take on, yeah. Maybe this will be actually pretty good. But they really never released what his role is going to be in the true I think detective be a series detective. too. Maybe, but uh, they never actually confirmed he was going to be a detective. He could be the bad guy for all you know. Oh, uh, I so just assumed they were casting the detectives first. But I could be wrong. Could and be. also, uh, Amy Adams is in it. Oh, I missed. She's that. a detective. 
Oh, well, maybe he will be the bad guy. No, they said supposedly all three are detectives. Oh, all three. Uh, all right. Amy Adams. We like some Amy Adams. We like some Amy Adams. That's we right. don't dislike Colin Farrell. No. Uh, we like Vince, Vince Vaughn. Vaughn when he's playing Vince Vaughn. We but do? for this role. Yeah, I well, do. I oh. like Vince Vaughn. I like Vince Vaughn. I liked Dodgeball. Dodge, dodge, and? dip, dive, dodge. Uh, wedding Crashers. No, wedding, he hated, he wedding, hated wedding Crashers. Swingers. I never saw Swingers. Did you like Amy Adams in Wedding Crashers? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't like uh, Vince no, Vaughn like Wedding Crashers. Uh, um, let's see. He was not terrible in The Breakup. I hated what The about Breakup. Made? You didn't like that movie? I didn't see that one either. Well, it's kind of like the follow-up to Swingers. Yeah, I, I didn't see Swingers. I hated made, The Breakup. So I can't, no? but, but he, oh, God, he did uh, Old Psycho. School? You didn't hated like him old in old school. school? Hated old school. I, I hated what? old school because of him. Oh my god! I liked him in old school. Old school I hated, was awesome. Old was school. Awesome in old I, mean, school. I, mean, I mean, I don't like Will Ferrell too much. He was okay in it. I, I liked Luke Wilson, but I hated Vince Vaughn in old school, and that's the reason I hated that movie. But you're not a Vince so Vaughn single-handedly not, made me hate that you're movie. You are not a Vince Vaughn fan. I'm not a Vince Vaughn fan. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's time for box office bombs. Okay, so box office bombs of the week for October 17th through the 19th. Uh, the Judge has only made $26 million on a $50 million budget. Not to be confused with uh, Bad Judge or whatever that TV show is, Can we right? please cancel that film <laughs> or that show? Dear yes. God. Uh, uh, the Judge with Robert Downey Jr. and Robert Duvall. Uh, did you have any desire to see that, Blake? No. Okay. Jeff took a break. Uh, he had an emergency, so uh, he'll be right back. Uh, so it's just Blake and I. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah! Yeah! Uh, the Book of Life has only made $17 million on a $50 million budget. What is the Book of Life? I have no idea. Okay, good. Uh, is that the one with Zach Braff? Who the hell cares? Nah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Top five at the box office for the 17th through the 19th of October. Yeah. Fury! Not to be confused with Nick Fury. That's right. With Brad Pitt, made $23.5 million in its opening week on a budget of $68 million. Looks interesting. Good, fantastical tank crew World War II movie. I'll yep. probably go see it, maybe. Maybe. Gone Girl, made $17.8 million. Total of $107 million on a budget of $61 million. And you get to see Ben Affleck's dick. So there you go. That's a positive. Well, that there you to go. Me. <laughs> yeah, I'll mute there, buddy. There you go. There you uh, go. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I had to go pee angrily after you start talking about Vince Vaughn. Uh, I think you're doing something. Else. I was just going to say that. Oh, Vince Vaughn. Let me yeah. turn that. Nick, wake up. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Book of Life made $17 million. Didn't we just talk about that? Yep. In yep. its opening week on budget of $50 million. Jeff, what is Book of Life? I have no clue. I have to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I only made $17 million. That's why I only made $17 million. <laughs> uh, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day made $12 million. Total of $36 million on a budget of $28 million. It's in the, it's in the red. It's in the black. And the best of me... Made ten million in its opening week on a budget of twenty six million. What the what fuck is, is the best, best of me? me? <laughs> okay, no I'm looking up Book of Life now. What Apparently, is... it's an animated. Uh, thing. Oh, Book of Life is the yeah where uh, Channing Tatum plays a cartoon character. Uh, he goes to the um, he dies and comes back, or he goes yeah. through the netherworld to save the love of his life. That's okay. what it is. Yeah. Diego Luna, Zoe Saldana, Channing Tatum, Ron Perlman, Christina Applegate, yeah. Ice Cube, Hector Alonso. It's an animated Danny film. Danny Trejo. I heard a lot of those people. Yeah, it's an animated film, and it's really cool. Yeah, you've like the... heard of a lot of those people, <laughs> and you're only going to hear them in that movie because it's animated, and it's just their voices. Oh, the best of me is a James Martin, Michelle, James Marsden, Michelle Monaghan movie. Is he Cyclops? I don't know what he is. Huh? Then I don't care if it's not Cyclops. <laughs> Anyways, oh, he's a douche. No, he's not. Um, upcoming October 24th through the 26th, 23 Blast. 23 Blast. That's, that? uh, it's about a, like a high school football player that's going blind. Oh, okay. Oh, so, you know, one of those uh, human inner strength Wait a things. minute. We know something on this podcast? Look at you go, Blake. I do research. Hey, we're not the least informed podcast. <laughs> that's not hot. That's, that's graphic novels. We just can't count. <laughs> that's right. John Wick. Uh, Which I just saw whoa. a commercial for for the first time about and? two days ago. And? It's Keanu Reeves. It's the best movie he's made since yes. The Matrix, according to the commercial. 
Uh, let's Don't see. Don't know what here. it's about. It's, it's, got, it's got Theon Greyjoy in it. Is it? Yes. Did you say Theo Huxable? No, oh, Theon right. Greyjoy from oh. Game of Thrones. Alfie Allen. Yes. Sister of, oh, like the brother yeah. of Lily Allen. I do yes. appreciate you guys talking about Game of Thrones because I was able to take a nap there with my mono, <laughs> so I appreciate that. He's yes. also the son of uh, Keith Allen, who played uh, the sheriff of Nottingham in uh, a Robin Hood. Uh, Why a spoon, cousin? No, not that Robin Hood. A good Robin Cause Hood. Because it'll hurt uh-huh. ma. It's dull, you twit. It will hurt ma. Now go back to singing Johnny Cash. Yeah. <laughs> I walk the line. There you go. <laughs> Ring of fire. Down, down, down. Okay, right. on. And uh, also next week, Ouija. That's Ouija. Ouija. Uh, not if you pronounce it correctly, it isn't. Oh, it's Ouija. Ouija board. Ouija board. Ouija board. <laughs> it's we, oui, the French word for yes, and ya, ja, the German word for yes. It looks bad. We oui, ya. Ja is the actual. Yeah, how long did it take Parker Brothers to say, hey, we got this great little <laughs> mystical board that uh, you can contact spirits with, but it's made from Park by Parker Brothers? Milton Bradley or whoever the hell makes it or owns it now? Um, it's a game board that you can talk to spirits with, but we mass produce it. I can't. It has wait. nothing to do with the occult except the fact that we put letters on it and shit. I'm so, uh, oh, go ahead, Joe. Oh, I'm so, apparently, I'm the only one that remembers the movie Witchboard from the late. I 80s. remember that. I okay, remember. I'm like, is this just a remake of yes. Witchboard? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> no, this is the sanctioned one from Parker Brothers. That's Actually, why it's called Ouija. <laughs> it's not going to have as much big hair. <laughs> It's which well, board. yeah. But I was... Tiny Contain in that? Yes. And uh, the guy from uh, uh, Days of Our Lives. These are like sands. The one the good-looking guy? Sands through an hour. Oh, they got plenty of good-looking guys. <laughs> uh, the guy who played Patch on Days of Our Lives. Uh, but, you know, I... I no. <laughs> you know, I did look at this, though. There are, you know... Uh, there are a lot of good-looking honeys in this movie, by the way. The one guy's dreamy. Yeah, it's got Olivia Cook in it. Go check her out. Do I know Olivia Cook? You will soon. All right. Oh, no, but she's a hell of a chef. Ah! Ah! <laughs> uh, and also, um, I'm excited about the Don't Break the Ice movie. I think that's coming out soon, too, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't Wake Daddy? Don't uh, Wake Daddy. Uh, well, guess Who? Oh, my God, already had a movie called Guess Who. I saw the Do- Don't Wake Daddy. That's a good porn. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, that, I, thought that was, no. I thought that was Connect Four. <laughs> <laughs> Twister. <laughs> Shoots and ladders, baby. Oh, I can't imagine how bad that one would be. Everybody has payday. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, you just ruined it. Oh. <laughs> Good night. Okay, that music means Top 5. All right, and that music is apt because Top 5 is music-related. First time ever we had a music-related one. That's because you hate music. Pretty much, I do. I do. What's our f- Top 5, Jeff? Top 5 will be Top 5 Movie Soundtracks. Okay, so... We, uh, these are our favorite movie soundtracks. Yeah, favorite. I mean, obviously, there are some good soundtracks that uh, I might not particularly care for. Because there may I don't be like some critically acclaimed ones, yes. yes. Yes, but these are the ones that I say. Uh, these, these are the are ones, the ones I like. that I, I say for. matters. Yeah, these, these are the ones that I say. I no. went through my DVD These collect, are the ones that DVD. I say matters. No, not me. No. Yes. I say <laughs> matters. Okay. Dear God, I'm ready to I go back. I went to my CD <laughs> collection and found the ones that I listened to. I checked my iP- iPad. I checked my iPod. I, I checked my iTunes and saw what I had bet most playlists. I'm like, if I listen to them, that means they're good. Yeah, and that's what I kind of did too is um, I have no musical taste. Uh, I, I admit <laughs> you that. You have no taste, It's true. <laughs> uh, basically, I, I don't know. It tastes like chicken. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. And <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so Please basically, don't extrapolate. <laughs> Anyways, uh, basically I took it as these are the soundtracks I got that I listened to over and over and over again. Um, so. What a coincidence, because that's exactly what I thought. You you two guys are on my wavelength. Ooh, Look at this. We're on a wavelength. You know what that means? So, so we're all on the same thing and our fi- top fives are the same. No. Uh, All right. Good night, everybody. See you later. <laughs> Blake, you go first. What's your number five? Number five. 
Uh, agreeing with what you guys said, I've got a whole list of honorable mentions. We'll get to those later because you'll knock some of those I'll off. I'll knock your number one out. <laughs> no, number five goes to uh, 24 Hour Party People from 2002. If uh, you're a big uh, fan of the Manchester scene and New Order, you actually go back and uh, you get good uh, music from uh, The Clash, Buzzcocks, Happy Mondays, Joy Division, New Order, all that good stuff. If you're yep. into that uh, good early alternative music. What film is this? 24, 24 Hour, hour Party People. People. I have not seen the movie. I have not heard the soundtrack, but the banjo list. I kind of like uh, at least uh, half of the ones I heard of. Yeah, I, it's it's think of it as uh, what, what was the recent movie that came out about CBGBs? Uh, uh, like the don't past know. couple years, with, CBGB. Uh, what's his name? He, he he was. It was about a documentary or say movie documentary about CBGBs, and so this is basically the English version. Of CBGBs, except it's on with the Manchester scene. I have no idea what's order. going on. <laughs> exactly, because you have no taste. I don't even know what CBGBs is. No, you don't even know. What C- <laughs> is it like the heebie-jeebies? Oh my god! <laughs> Let's see. CBGB movie was heebie-jeebies. It's called CBGB from 2013. Yeah. Yes, uh, CBGB. Okay. That's what I was with, thinking. With starred. Uh, I don't know that. The, I haven't gotten that far yet. The big name. Uh, his what's his name? Vince Vaughn. No. no, no, we hate Vince Vaughn. Oh wait. Uh, Alan Rickman. Yes. Malin Ackerman. Justin yeah. Bartha. There's all kinds of people in that movie, and Johnny it's a great Galecki. movie. Rupert Grant. The problem is, I never bought that soundtrack, so I couldn't list it. But it gets my honorable mention. That's only an honorable mention. This is supposed to be your number five. I'm on number five. That's oh. 24 Hour Party People. Oh, CBGB gets your honorable CBGB mention. CBGB would get an okay. honorable mention, but I never bought the soundtrack. But I, honestly, out of all the bands that make their debut in CBGB, which this guy helped create the American punk scene, I'd probably have at least one of every other songs. Help me. Yes. <laughs> all right, Jason. Yeah, since, what, 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 yo, cars, what car five? soundtrack do you have? Cars 1 or Cars 2, Jason? <laughs> how, how many Disneys do you have, Jay? Yeah. Zero. Oh, okay. Was it My Lynn or My Tay or Maison or Mass Tech? Whatever that fuck Disney movie is. What the fuck? I have no clue what he's talking about. Mylon? Mulan? Mulan. <laughs> Maison? What the fuck? My Tech? Exactly. <laughs> There's a reason we haven't been here for two weeks. This show's going off the rails. <laughs> Woo! On a crazy train. Going on rails. Crazy train. Anyways, oh, number five. More country than uh, Ozzy <laughs> I Osbourne. I want to hear a country version of it now. <laughs> can, can I finish? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> number five. No, okay, no, please go ahead, Chase. Empire Records. Oh, <laughs> that's what number my... is that? Uh, yeah, four. Four. Oh, I took, took my it. number four. Put it on the board. Uh, that's on, on board. my honorable mention list. I like that. I have that. I listen to it a lot, but it didn't break my top five. Every if song in that show. Empire Records. Let me see that for a second. For right? everyone who can't see, I'm holding up my. It was a great case, movie too, CD by case. the way. You have Gin Blossoms, Cranberries, yes, uh, Martinis, Toad the Wet Sprocket, yes. Toad the Wet Sprocket. Uh, let's see here. Um, sorry, um, whole lot of trouble. The song. A whole lot of trouble. Uh, and also uh, Sugar High. Sugar High. Sugar Coyote High. Shiver Sugar High. And the the soundtrack or the, the, the music on the, there's like three times as much music that's in the movie that's not on yes. the soundtrack. There's a it's hell of a lot good. that's in You got, there. you know, Romeo and Juliet by Dire Straits not on the soundtrack. And I think there was an extended there. soundtrack. There probably could have been. Yeah, I thought there was. The, I mean, throwing, ass Ponies were yeah, in the movie. Ass, you got Throwing Muses, you know, she yeah. was in there. You know, that group was in there too. A whole bunch of whole bunch of uh, groups that are in that movie that didn't make the soundtrack. I want money. Yeah, exactly. Dire Joe's Straits is money. Is that Dire Straits? You said is Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. Oh, I like that one. I gotta write that down. Yeah. So, and actually, if you read about Empire Records, which is kind of ironic that you've got this because I read it. Uh, Toby McGuire was in it. it. Probably about a couple of weeks ago about it. How it was originally, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like all good cult classics, originally rejected at the box office. Because mostly it came at the post of the uh, Generation X 
uh, generation yeah. movie time generation, and it was yeah. you know uh, of course Generation X. We're all like you know reject all that kind of stuff. But the, it was a big hit with the Generation Y and the Millennials. Yeah. Well, it after been... it came out, after it left the studio, after the movie theater, the the it was released in seventeen theaters. Really, that, that was, was a, it. it was a 17, bad release. Yeah, it was it, the the movie studio got one bad review or one bad thing, and they got they didn't release it wide, and. Uh, a test audience, a bad test audience, or whatever. Yeah, because they're te- they were testing on yeah. Gen Xers, and they're yeah. like, "Yeah, we've oh, been no, through I'm these movies Xer, before." Blah, blah, blah. No, no, no what it was? They they tested. Apparently, they tested it in like in California, or whatever. They tested it. Oh, in, that's the problem. In, in, it was the, California. They, they tested we all know it in, in the whatever there. suburbs, and they loved it. Then they tested it in the Latino area, and they didn't get it. So they said, "Oh my God, these people don't get it. Why are we releasing?" I'm like. Because it's not geared towards them. That's correct. I, Romeo and Juliet was also in 200 Cigarettes. Yeah, that's Ooh. nice. No, but, but, but anyways. <laughs> but anyways, what's nice about it is anybody that's worked in a record store can relate to this movie. Time out. And People what's under- to say exactly, that's my next point. <laughs> next point is, you know, the, you know, the kids, teenagers, young college students growing up today don't have the thrill of going to a record store like they do today where you can go in, you hang out with people, you're listening to uh, people that work there that are playing their favorites list and basically playing music that you would never be exposed to because it wasn't in a, a fucking Apple commercial, you know? <laughs> and, YouTube. You know, like, or free shit from YouTube, but, or YouTube. But, you know, but ultimately what it came down to, you went there in the, the whole record store experience is something that, you know, that died with our generation that those that came after us will never be able to under experience the thrill of going to a record store like that. And unfortunately, it's going to be like that for a comic book store in about 30 years. Yeah, I so. I, it, will. I, it, it will. And I hate it because I hate reading. I hate reading my books on screens. I like yeah. reading them paper. It's your number right. five, Jeff. My number five. I thought right that here. was your number five. No, no that, was mine. that was my number that four. That was your number it was five. His number five. That was my your number, number four. four. So what my is your number five? My number five, uh, I, I got a twofer. A two for one? A two for one. We can't count. Is that is the same as a BOGO? Yes, it is. is well, that, I want to get one? I, I, I bought them as a double feature. No shit. Right here, double oh feature. Oh my God, he's right there. He's Reservoir it Dogs, Pulp Fiction, double feature soundtrack. I've got it right here. You brought so, visual aids to I, a uh, to <laughs> audio <laughs> broadcast. Exactly. But there it is. Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. Uh, and pretty much represent to... Uh, representative of pretty much all Quentin Tarantino, but those two especially. Those were on my honorable mentions. Uh, let's see. Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs, Little Green Bag. Little Green Bag. Hooked yeah. on a Feeling. Oh, I'm hooked yes. on a feeling. Magic Carpet Ride. Fool for yep. Love. Who doesn't remember Stuck in the Middle with you from that movie? Stuck in the Middle with you. Harvest Moon. Lime in the coconut. You drink Lime them bowled the up. Coconut, of course. Pulp Fiction. Miserable, or however you pronounce it. Jungle Boogie. Let's Stay Together. Lonesome Town. Son of a Preacher Man. Dusty Springfield yep. classic. Son of a Preacher uh, Man. Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon. A uh, um, dun, 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 Urge dun, Overkill remake dance. of the... Uh, Didn't Tarantino put that like in half his films? <laughs> no, just that one. Just that one? But uh, yeah, Neil Diamond uh, song that Urge Overkill did a beautiful remake of. I love that. Mm. Uh, if You Love a Red Dress. Flowers on the Wall by the Statler yeah. Brothers. I mean... <laughs> Great, great songs. I agree completely. And since since I feel I can put them together, since I bought them together. That's correct. And you're number four? My number four is Empire Records. Okay. Empire Records, great choice. Go up see on, the movie if you haven't yet. Up on the board. Up on the board. <laughs> number four for me? It can't rain all the time. The Crow. No, you fucker. <laughs> the Crow. You son of a bitch. Where is that on yours? It's my number two. On the board! Blake's I am two, two for You're two. two for two. That Crow, is my Crow number Man two. mentioned for me. It, it's, I do have the soundtrack in my collection. Crow but. is a great soundtrack. Can't rain all the time. Um, just shit, now I can't the think The Cure. The Cure. Night and Snails. Stone yes. Temple Pilots. Rage Against the Machine. Violent Femmes. Rollins Band. Helmet. Pantera. Medicine. Yeah. The Cure. I mean, you could just keep on going. I mean, yeah. Every <laughs> single song on that The Crow album... Just fucking is awesome. Now that you're reading that, I'm trying to figure out how that didn't make my top I just five. I like the Throw Kill Cult. They got one on there, too. It's awesome. I, I liked it. Uh, my favorite one is uh, when he's at the very end 
Um, or I'm sorry, when he's uh, putting on the makeup. And he knows that he's going to battle. Yes. Uh, I can't remember what song that is, but it's just like the beat is getting heavier and heavier. And he's are you talking about it? The first time he puts the makeup yeah. on, that's the cure. Is that, that is, cure? Yes, that is the I cure song on there. Yeah, I gotta watch that movie now. Yeah, it Jason, is awesome. Jason likes the cure. He didn't even know that. Yeah, I, I'm okay with the cure. <laughs> you like the cure? I love the cure. Uh, what's your number four, Blake? <sighs> All right, well, anyways. Just going to knock everybody down. (laughs) Just to show you uh, my range in music appreciation. I really love the Coen brothers. Oh, brother, where art thou? Honorable mention. Number four. I'll tell you what. If you are not a true-blooded American or (laughs) true-blooded just music fan whatsoever, especially the classic bluegrass country. I'm not, when I'm talking about country, I'm not talking about the bad rock bands today that pass themselves off as country. I'm talking about real country, real bluegrass, real hills music, folks. This is a great collection of iconic songs and if you go about, do your research about the Coen brothers on this, they actually went into uh, bluegrass, you know, Appalachian Hills uh, communities recorded some songs and did their research so when they came out and put this together it was a classic it is a classic and you know the remake of man of constant sorrow obviously being the song that uh oscar forefronts the uh yeah the one well, it's that's not most oscar popular because it was, it was a remake that's right. oh uh but was it did t-bone burnett do the yeah. uh put it together yeah he oh, it, was he the one for oscar uh, yeah, he was Bo up for Burnett, it. who did the great soundtrack music for True Detective series. Oh, did he? I didn't know yes, that. Yes, he did. T Bone Burnett is who you get to do your T-Bone soundtracks, Dur- and you'll yeah, be done right. T Bone Burnett is. I mean, like the man. Like I, I hope I'm not ruining anybody's Cold Mountain. I don't think anybody threw nope. Cold Mountain on theirs. I know he did that, and it's like it, kind of the same type music yeah. in the, the you know a southern. Uh, not just great music, but mood setting music, and, and that fits. Yeah, fits. It fits and, the tone of what you you're can watching. also get. Um, I think it's Hakeem Olajuwon who did Frozen. Let it go. <laughs> I think uh, according to John Travolta, you can get her to do shame, it too. Shame on you. <laughs> shame, it was not Hakeem Olajuwon. John Travolta said. I think it was like Kim Olajuwon. No, oh God, I'm trying to remember what John Travolta called her. Um, Dulce. Ma... Ah, Kim Olajuwon. Kazim. Oh, Kazim. I don't remember. Yeah. Idina Menzel's her name, and oh, I yes. used to know what John Travolta called her, and he, yeah, he. Oh, that was that was a, a, an abortion of uh, words from. <laughs> Can John we bring Travolta. the quality of this podcast? <laughs> What's your number up, three? Please? Can What's we your number three? Bring it up, and I will bring it up with 1992 singles. Oh, good one. Uh, you know, see. that is your quintessential 1992 grunge soundtrack time out, time minus out. Nirvana. That's my number Who's three. Got it? I got singles right here. Your number three? My That's number my three. number three. It's my What's number three. Doing, dude? You're, You're awesome. awesome. High five for everybody. Woo. Put it on we, the board. Put it on it the is. board. Single. Oh, well, it's same number. He just read it first. Yeah, same thing. Paul but Westerberg, singles. you know. Top uh, five is going smashing quick. Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Pearl but, Jam. Yeah, Alice in Chains uh, Wood. Oh, Screaming Trees, uh, Alice in Chains. I mean, it just doesn't fucking Chris end. Cornell. Chris Cornell. Uh, the Love Mongers. Yes. Uh, Mother Love Bone. Mother Love Bone. Soundgarden. Mud Honey. Screaming yes. Trees. Smashing Pumpkins. I mean, if you're anybody that's anybody that's into the early 90s Seattle grunge scene, we just named about almost everybody out of there. And, and the, a few more. Uh, the thing I love, it, it's not... I mean, this is representative of uh, the, the crap. What's his name? The director, Cameron Crow. Cameron Crow. Cameron yes. Crow puts together great soundtracks too. Yeah. Uh, uh, Almost Famous. Mm-hmm. Great yes. soundtrack. Didn't make my list because singles is representing my Cameron yeah. Crow. And as much as the movie wasn't that good, even though I liked it, Elizabeth Town. Great soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think Nikki said both those. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nikki at Pumazili said both of those on her. Uh, her tweet on what what she picked, and I'm like, well, I've got Cameron Crowe represented on my list, just singles because, mm-hmm. well, that's sp- that point in life, you know. I'm there. I'm in. Uh, that's my my collegiate days. So that that that's holds a place. Yep. Okay. My number three is going to be a chick flick. But I don't care. And I think you like it though, Jeff. Uh oh. Ten things I hate about you. Great I, soundtrack. Uh, what was on it? Ah, uh, shit. Because I remember. No. Oh, oh, shit. What was on it? This you, one? This is your number three? And you can't tell me what was on it? You didn't You picked the soundtrack and you don't know what songs were on it? You just like the movie. 
You just liked the movie. You didn't like the music. <laughs> well, I like the. I remember liking the music, but I don't know what's on it. Talk amongst yourself here, uh, people. Hold on, hold on. I'm looking at it. Even Angels things. Fall, which was a great one. I do have the soundtrack, but it's in my car now. Son of a bitch. Uh, talk amongst <laughs> yourself. Uh, Jeff, what's your number three? My number three was singles. Our number three was singles. <laughs> Ten things I hate about oh, you. People just like the Shit. cars. I'm looking on iTunes now, and I went. I put ten things I hate about Here you, <clears throat> and it popped up with ten things men think about sex during sex. Okay. <laughs> Soundtrack album. I ten things one I thing hate about sex. you. I don't think about ten. Bare I'm pretty single ladies. focused on this. Oh, time out, time out. Bare naked ladies one week. Yes. All Letters right. to Cleo. I want you to want me. Jessica to Cleo. Cleo Jessica Riddle. Riddle. Jessica Riddle. Even angels fall. Semi Sonic. <laughs> Leroy with New World. Sister Hazel. George, George Clinton, Clinton, Atomic Dog, George Joan Clinton. Armstrong, The Cardigans, Cardigans. Wings Madness, of, Man is with the Wings Madness. of a Dove, Another yeah. Letters to Cleo out of the song, Letters to Cleo. Cruel to be Kind, okay. um, which I just bought Cruel to be Kind now, <laughs> while I'm watching Cruel it. Cruel to be Kind in, in the right place. Place. Although I like the Nick Lowe version better than the, the, the Letters to Cleo version. Uh, and then Richard Gibbs with One More Thing, so... Um, I do have the, the thing now uh, I have on my phone. I recognize a few of the songs. Sure. I love that. Uh, I love the movie okay. and I love the soundtrack. I seriously you listen, used to listen to it a, long, a lot. Used to. So, uh, hey, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's number three is gone. Uh, my, my number three is Singles. Our number three it's is a singles. movie about Stop the Seattle grunge scene. Awesome. Number two. Did you know in Singles that Pearl Jam, three members of Pearl Jam, uh, were in the movie? Yeah. They, they, they were the uh, Matt Dillon's uh, supporting band, Citizen Dick. Yes, yeah, Citizen oh. Stone Dick Gosser, was actually... Stone Jeff uh, Ament, yeah. and Eddie Vedder were, citizen, were three-fourths of Citizen Dick. Half our audience wasn't, weren't born in 92. Yeah, well, that's the <laughs> point. Hey, they're big in Belgium. That's true. Okay, what's your uh, number two? In Japan. Uh, my number two, I They're know I'm going, to get, I'm going to get some ire from Jason on this one. <laughs> Ooh, ire. Is that our theme word for tonight? <laughs> ire. Geek ire. We've got ire. A lot of ire tonight. Yes. Um, across the universe. Ugh, Beatles. Yeah, Jason hates the Beatles for whatever reason. Uh, Jason hates the Beatles because he didn't listen to the Beatles. That's the only thing I could think of. Because Cause Jason has no culture. I don't have any musical taste, so just and because no I hate the Beatles, taste. don't get upset. No, it's, well, it's the fact that the Beatles, like, their range is huge. So, okay, if you hate this version, mm. I hate their happy, love me, do, I want to hold your hand crap. But I That's love... That's the Bebop Beatles. Yeah, but I love their drug You love the Stone uh, Beatles. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, there's Beatles for everybody. Jason just needs there to is, find his Beatles There's Beatles, Beatles for everybody, and you just gotta find your be inner Beatle. But what this movie did was take even the songs that I don't like and remix them to get the mood that they're looking yeah. for in the movie. What, what movie was this again? Across the Universe. I, I'm familiar with the album. Well, there's the Beatle album, yeah. Across the Universe. They made a movie... Where it was a musical with all Beatles songs in it. And they redid like 24 Beatles songs. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Why didn't I see... I, go down, I don't know. I go down to Abbey Road on the River in Louisville, Kentucky every summer. Abbey Road on the River is basically a huge four-day Beatles festival over Memorial Day. Okay. And I've never seen that there, but I would like to see it there. All right. And if well, you're a big, huge Beatles fan in the Midwest... Go to Kentucky. Who the fuck would have thought Kentucky would have a be huge ass Beatles Why get not? together marathon? No, but yeah, uh, across the universe, uh, I'll let you borrow the movie. Or well, I've got the, get, I've got across the universe. I don't need the soundtrack. I've got the original. No, but it's they're, the they're, they're not the Beatles. The new one. Yeah, they're, but it's they're, the new they're not one. the Beatles. It's, it's, it's like. They redo that, all the songs that the actors in the movie are doing the songs. All the musical people, like the high school musical people doing Across the Universe. Oh God, they're not high school musical. But, <laughs> I mean, the there's no Zac Efron ever. in this. No, no, you need to see the movie. All right, so it's not like I Am Sam, where they have, you know, big hit names today covering Beatles music. I don't know. I Am Sam, the... Sean Penn? Sean Penn yes. movie? Yes. Oh, no, it, it's... There's a lot of Beatles music in that, by the it, way. It, I did not know that. Yeah, but it's all covers. But no, anyways. no, it's it. Well, it's they it's use covers, the, but it's the actors from the music. They use the Beatles music to tell the story, and so the Ooh. actors in the movie are singing the Beatles songs. And like even songs, like I said, I don't like "I Want to Hold Your Hand," but the version they did in the movie <laughs> blew my mind. I'm like, I hate this song, but now I love it. Awesome. And Jason's jacking there off in go. the corner. <laughs> 
Anyways, so, yeah, me, 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 moving me, on me, to me, non-crappy me, me, shit. Me, 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 me. Okay, Beaker, calm me, down. Me, All right, me, let's go. Me, me, Say me, it. <laughs> Frost, Frozen, whatever. Oh. Fuck Disney shit you got. <laughs> Number two. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Jeff, you got to appreciate this. South Park, bigger, longer, uncut. I can't argue <laughs> that. Great, and you know why? We were won talking the about a man with no musical taste. There no, you go. That Park, music, it? that movie, that Blame soundtrack. Canada. I wore out the CD. That's how much I listened wow. to it. Wow. <laughs> and honestly, oh, Blame Canada was the one nominated. Yeah, for, I didn't like uh, Blame Canada. It was probably the weakest song on the yes. album in the yes. movie. Uh, but well, that was the one nominated because it was oh, the only one that wasn't full of cuss Cal words. Mom's a bitch, yeah, super bitch. <laughs> Shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker. fucker. Oh, You're a boner biting bastard, the, Uncle Fucker. What's the one that, uh... Yeah, Jesus Christ. We go from across the University of <laughs> Beatles to South Park to shut your face, motherfucker. Uncle, Uncle fucker. fucker. Uncle, Uncle fucker. fucker. Uncle Fucker. <laughs> what's the one that Mr. Garrison sings? That's the one I like. I don't even shit remember. Fuck, uh, you shouldn't say that word because shit... Uh, no, fucks, no, that's fucks the worst. Yeah, Mr. Council, Mac- uh, Council fucks the Mackey. worst word that you can say. Fucks the worst Inse- word that you can say. Instead of saying fuck, say okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, the La Resistance reprise was my that, favorite. I agree. That is the best one. So. I mean, honestly, uh, Trey Parker is a pretty damn good musician and uh, musical uh, uh, arranger. Because, you know, he took four different songs that went throughout yes. the thing and then for the reprise, combined them all and they flowed. I mean, it was beautifully done. Yes. Okay. 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 So all that's right. on my number two. <laughs> that's number two. What's okay. your number two? Well, my number two was Blown by the Crow. Oh, it was Blown by the Crow? No, <laughs> the Crow was Blown. What's oh. number one? My number one being the podcast that you can't count. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Is two? Three Beatles soundtracks. Oh, I got Jesus. it. Put them up there. Help, oh. Hard Day's Night, Magical Mystery Tour. You know, honestly, yeah. The, origina- the original MTV <sighs> music video... <laughs> that you'll ever see. That's this is the legacy. Yeah. Fifty years later, yeah. I threw across the universe on there, but like I said, I wasn't a fan of those early Beatles. So, help in a hard day's night, I can do without those. To be honest, love magical mystery tour. Why don't you put Yellow Submarine on there too? Make it four. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Yellow Submarine's on there now too. <laughs> now remember, the Beatles aren't a rock and roll band. The Beatles are a pop music band. They, they, they covered everything. They yeah. covered everything. If 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 somebody thought about doing heavy metal, they already did it in Helter Skelter. Somebody thought they can do good rhythm and blues, they they already they already covered it too. So, from beginning to end, there's no question. Oh, yeah, no question, no question. <laughs> it's no, granted they're no Uncle Fuckers. But granted, <laughs> they are no Uncle Fuckers. That's right. They are the pretty. Pod- they are pretty, pretty much up there. This is the podcast episode that hates me. Game of Thrones, True Detective, and. <laughs> Uh, well, you just need to go watch True Detective. Probably, I would like to see it. <laughs> and the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Well, to go from Blake's number ones that suck to good mood songs, um, <laughs> says the man with no musical taste, <laughs> Uncle Fucker. That's exactly. You. That's, that's what me. I'm saying. All right, Jay, what are you going with? No, you'll like it. Okay. Now, it is a musical. So, oh, I know where you're going because I saw Twitter earlier. So... It is a musical, so that's kind of cheating, but it's still a soundtrack. No, it's still a soundtrack. I agree completely. Rent. Yep. My favorite musical of all time. Love Rent. I... Now, came close. Age, age, age. <laughs> Wait a minute. That was in uh... <laughs> Team America. Team America. Team America. <laughs> and oh, wait, I don't want to make my age, number age, one age, Team age, America age, soundtrack. Age, 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 age. Eight. Every song in Rent I love. Yeah. Um, except I think the 125,600 one... 125,600 minutes. minutes. How do you measure? Measure a year. Uh, by a calendar. Um, but... Well, you just ruined that song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite song is one song. Um... One dong. No. <laughs> Uh, when he's trying to make the one song that will last forever. Uh, um, I'm not remembering that, but go ahead. <laughs> he sings it to uh, Rosario Dawson. Um, is that the candle lighting one? Yeah. Oh, that was my no, least no, no, favorite. No, 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 okay. no. That's not uh, it. That's not it. Okay. He does have a different one. Candle light one time. Okay. Yeah. This um, is your number one. You can't even fucking remember what it is. <laughs> this is like your other fucking soundtracks, but you can remember Uncle Fucker. That's why I brought my soundtracks with me. <laughs> Hold on. I just got it. Here we go. Okay. So anyways, I did like when they're in, uh, let's see here, Seasons of Love, you got, what the fuck's going on here? Uh, you'll See, 
Uh, one Song Glory, that's what it's called. Oh, Sorry. okay. Yeah, that was uh, Light One my Song Glory. Light My Candle. Light the My one Candle. That was awful. I did not like that one. Uh, and I also don't like the Tango for Marine. Oh, I liked the Tango I didn't Marine. like that one. Oh, I did like uh, the Tango Today for you. Tango for, for, for today Marine. For you. Oh, it's the Tango Marine. Um, it's for Marines? The, tango it, Marine. No, Marine. Her name is Marine, and you have to dance around her to... Have Whatever. you seen Red? No. Well, then you have... Uh, it's uh, I'll because. cover you. Yeah, I'll cover uh, you. I'll cover you. Yeah, the Marines. Yeah, oh, well, I'll uh, cover you, girl. La Vie Bohema. <laughs> oh, La Vie Bohème. Yes, that's a good song. Uh, I should tell you that was okay. I don't know. Don't uh, tell me. Take me or leave me. I really like that one. Leave it. Take me or leave. <laughs> I love uh, how you guys are fighting over your soundtrack. <laughs> your number one. You ones. know what, Blake? Love heels. Love heels. <laughs> love heels. Your love hurts or love stinks. Those are no, both good no, songs. No, no, I no, like no. all those. Rent. References. I'm sorry. I don't care. I know I have bad musical taste, but I love Rent. Uh, favorite musical. Uh, one of my favorite movies. So. I, enjoy, I enjoy Rent. I, I so. can't argue. What's your number one, Jeff? My I number hate one. Musicals. Josie and the Pussycats. It's not Josie and the Pussycats. Oh, uh, because Nikki from Pumazili wanted to take you off the board. She I, had Josie I, and the Pussycats. I saw that tweet, and I'm like, you know, Josie only got honorable mention for me, even though they were trying to uh, use subliminal advertising to get me to buy it. Uh, now, my number one is, and that's my number one is a soundtrack. I think it's an excellent soundtrack. I think it's the best soundtrack for a shitty movie. Okay, what is that? Queen of the Damned. Okay. Uh, shitty movie, yes. Very Convince shitty me movie. me the good songs. Convince. Well, I really love the songs. Ali- uh, Aya. She's Aaliyah. She's in- Aaliyah was in. Aaliyah. Aaliyah. That. I, I really love. Uh, Jonathan Davies of Corn wrote like five songs of- specifically for the movie. Form of Corn. <laughs> <laughs> wrote five songs specifically for the movie. That because Sony or Dix wouldn't let him sing on the soundtrack. So he went and got his friends in other bands to sing his songs. But we got uh, uh, Wayne Static from Static X, David Draymond from Disturbed, <clears throat> Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park, Marilyn, Min- uh, Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Monroe? Jay Gordon from Orgy all sang original songs written for the thing. And then they also have uh, songs from Papa Roach, Deftones, Disturbed, Static X, Earshot, Godhead, Kidney hold... Thieves, Tricky, and Dry Cell. I won't hold Papa Roach against it. Okay. But uh, the, I really especially love the original songs for the, the movie. Uh, but, you know, obviously, you know, Queen of the Damned is a continuation of the uh, Vampire Lestat uh, yeah. stories. Uh, Interview with the Vampire movie Such was a first. shitty, shitty movie. But it was, it was a bad movie, and I'm not going to tell you to go out and get the movie, but go out. Uh, just go on YouTube. I, I saw it on YouTube earlier today. You can just listen to the soundtrack, uh, an hour and 15 minute soundtrack on YouTube. It's great, great. Not great saying you shouldn't soundtrack. pay for the songs, but you know, if it's well, out there on YouTube, listen to the it's free. Sound- download it. <laughs> they have to pay for it? Fuck it. No, no, go, go buy the whole album, but you can listen to it before you buy it to make sure you like it, and I guarantee you like it. My guarantee means I won't give you your money back, but <laughs> send, send your checks to reimbursements to Jeff. Jeff had bad ideas. Good ideas. But uh, uh, that this movie came out when I was working at the theater, and I previewed it, and I'm like, I walked away from the movie saying that soundtrack is great. The movie sucked. The soundtrack is great. Went out, bought the soundtrack, and for like the next three years. That was what I listened to in the back office when we were counting down every night. So you were listening to that, and I was listening to South Park. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. Uncle Fucker. <laughs> uh, so, got some quick ones here. Fan selections. They got some good ones. Nikki Pumazili had Rent, Cross the Universe, Guardians of the Galaxy, which got a lot oh, of Cross the Universe for you, too. Yeah, right. Cross the Universe. Know, I, I agree, Nikki. Wow, uh, you were right that. on that one. You took one off. You just uh, thought it was going to be Josie and the Pussycats, but you took Cross the Universe. Almost Famous and Jos- Josie and the Pussycats. Almost Famous, yeah. Amy yeah. at Culture Babble was Disney-oriented. Yeah. Frozen. <laughs> let it go. Uh. Let it go. Yeah, let it go. Uh, the Lion let King. Ah, uh, now, the one good song, well, there's a couple good songs. In the I, like King. King I like Lion King I like Lion King, but the Be Prepared song. Be Scar Prepared. Sings. But he said there was going to be no king. No king, king no king. king. Fools, la, 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 la. I will, will be, be your king. king. Uh, Whatever gar- happened to Frere Bear and Frere Rabbit? Brer Bear? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, that was in Song of the South. Song yeah. of the South. That was yeah. the most racist <laughs> Disney film ever. Can we not talk about that? That was good music, though. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Was it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Aladdin, and Beauty and the Beast is what Amy had. Uh, Bright- Guardians, was it? Guardians of the Galaxy was bad early 80s music. Yeah. It was 70s music. 70s music. And it wasn't bad. It wasn't, bad. Well, it wasn't that great. Guardians of the Galaxy had a, uh, its main song that was also on uh, the Reservoir Dogs that I picked earlier. And my ringtone. And your ringtone. Oh, don't I feel it? Uka shaka, uka shaka. Let's see. Brian Hackney had Brian Hackney. I had Guardians of the Galaxy, Pulp Fiction, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, Rocky, and the wedding singer. I forgot about the wedding singer. Oh, there's your bad oh, 80s music. Oh, there's your bad 80s music. Yeah. Musings of a Geek, Dan, had Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which yeah. actually was a good soundtrack. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not actually remembering the soundtrack. So I'm Ocean's 11 and, and 13. What? Tron Legacy, which actually got really good reviews online. Really? Yeah, the soundtrack did, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I saw that too when I was looking to what other people thought, and yeah. I went, oh, yeah, they're picking Tron. Okay. Juno and Kill Bill. Okay. Huh. Doctor Number One had Small Soldiers, which actually is true. It did have a good soundtrack. Okay, good soundtrack for a bad movie. I like Small Soldiers. Oh, you liked the movie? I love that movie. Phil Hartman. I think World War I was my favorite war. <laughs> or two it was. I and Ray Meebers, at R. Meebers, had Sucker Punch and the Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers. How could I forget I'd that? I'd go one? as an, uh, just real quick, we can go through the, our animal selection real quick. Oh, mentions. Animal mentions. I got mentions. Go. The movie Go. Go? Oh, I know the movie yeah. Go. That was a good movie. What was yes. the movie Go? I'm not placing uh, it. It was go. like four so, sh- uh, stories all interconnected. Had Jay Moore, Katie Holmes, uh, William Fincher. Great show. Wow. I don't think I've ever Keep even Keep talking. Heard of this. Blake, your turn. It's an interesting movie, actually, right. believe it or not. I what? had uh, The Graduate. I had that on my honorable mentions. I had uh, Train Spotting. I did I not. No. Train Spotting's good. I, I'm not a huge fan of that type of music. Uh, I had uh, also uh, Gross Point Blank. Oh, I forgot about that one. I had Platoon. Okay. I had Pretty in Pink. Yeah, no, honestly, there was like one good song. There's a couple good songs on there. OMD, that's about oh, it. I had uh, <laughs> Spinal Tap. I had, This is Spinal, Spinal Tap. Tap. That's right there on my uh, honorable mention. And the one that I didn't count because it was like a movie within itself, uh, Pink Floyd The Wall. Ah, yeah. Well, the movie came out before, or the soundtrack came out before the movie, yeah. technically, but... I, I could see that. Yeah, uh, one's also not mentioned. Uh, just off my top five, I had yeah. Garden State soundtrack. Garden State. I've the heard, Shins yeah. will change your life. I have um, the Shins. Let's see. Spinal Tap, Oh Brother, The Graduate, Dazed and Confused. Yeah, Dazed uh, and good Confused. Good 70s A music like Dazed and Confused. confused. Uh, the Breakfast Club. Yeah. Yeah, that one too. And The Big Chill. Mm. Big Chill, yeah. Reason back. So. There's their episode. The episode number 42, episode hates Jason. Uh, <laughs> title of the show. Title of the, of the show, episode. this episode hates Jason. Uh, number Bad idea number 309. Uh, personal one, not going to the doctor for two weeks when you have mono. Although no offense, Jay, the doctor would have just said, yeah, I can't give you anything to help you. Yeah, just but... Just two weeks earlier, you yeah, know. But you just it. had <laughs> my uh, homebrew liquor, so you should be feeling good in about a week. I hope so, because I'm going to fall asleep right now. <laughs> well, let's hope you feel good enough on Saturday. Fingers crossed. Hoping. Hope. Because we're seeing Dan Zisco up in Columbus. Yes. Uh, Next week's episode will be a cross-promotion. Cross-promotion with Zisco musings and, and culture Amy. babble. Yes. So Amy and Dan. Uh, and Jeff. And myself. Hopefully Jason and will maybe be, able to be we'll well see. enough to make the trip. Whew. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, Roger says... Goodbye. Goodbye. You are now leading the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends.